Hello, this is Mr. Buss, and today I'm going to walk you through how to do Lab 12, Energy from Fossil Fuels. Although this lab is titled Energy from Fossil Fuels, what we're really going to be testing today is we're going to be comparing alcohol versus candle wax versus paraffin lamp oil. So the purpose of this lab becomes the determine the energy content of a fuel by burning an amount of the fuel and capturing the heat released in a known amount of water. Calorimetry, you did a similar thing as 10th graders in biology when you burned f like types of food. The connection between why we're doing this lab now and the fourth eye book on climate is that when you burn any type of fuel, a combustion reaction results in the release of carbon dioxide and water vapor, and carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, uh, which is going to potentially have a, an impact on climate. When you weigh the alcohol burner with the alcohol in it, you can weigh it any way you want to, but just weigh it the same before and after burning. So if you have all this stuff on it right now when you weigh it for the first time, make sure to include all that stuff when you weigh it the second time as well. Record that number in your data table. Let's go ahead and set this experiment up to burn the alcohol first. So set up a ring stand with the clamp. Metal can with a uh, stir rod through it to support it with the alcohol burner right below that. First let's go ahead and record the weight of the can when it's empty. Go ahead and add about 200 milliliters of cold tap water. It doesn't have to be exact because you're going to weigh it anyway. All right, there's 200 milliliters. Weigh the can now that it's got the water in it. Put the can back on your apparatus. Okay, now it's time to hook up your LabQuest device to a temperature probe. Put the temperature probe um, through a clamp and get it into the water of the um, in the can, but don't put the temperature probe all the way to the bottom of the can. What I mean by that is, you can kind of see here in this close-up picture that the temperature probe is in the water. You can see that it's in the water, but it is not touching the bottom of the can. Record the initial temperature and you'll be ready to start. You can see I color coded this data table. When you filled out all of the categories in yellow, that's the stuff you need to get before you start the burn. Make sure to put on some safety glasses. Okay, when you're all set to go, go ahead and light, light your alcohol burner. Place it underneath your water. Enter the experiment as it's running. Keep an eye on your temperature. When it gets to about 45 degrees, stop. Make sure that your flame is making best contact with your can and make sure that the height is appropriate and that the can is basically as close as it can get to the flame. Wondering what the heat shield is for, it's up to you. You can try to use it. My lab quest is showing that I'm at about 45 degrees, so I'm going to take the cover and easily extinguish the flame. I'm not going to record my final number yet because this might change a little bit. I'd ask that you kind of move the water around a little bit, mix it around, and allow the test, allow the temperature probe to kind of make sure it's at the right final temperature. When this is cooled down, I would ask that you please return the rubber stopper because you're going to have to re-weigh this and you're going to want to weigh that with the rubber stopper on it again. Go ahead and record your final number if it's stable. Now all that's left is to get the mass of the fuel burn. So again, put the alcohol burner with everything on it that you had it was on it before with the heat shield and the rubber cap and the metal cap put it on the scale and record your reading down
So once again, you can see I color coded this so that um, the readings that you got after the burn are in green here. So make sure that these numbers are filled out after you make the burn the fuel. Now let's crunch these numbers here. What is the mass of the fuel burned? Well, we know how much fuel we started with. We know how much fuel we ended with. If we simply take the difference, 208.1 minus 206.5, I get 1.6. Do a similar thing here for the mass of water heated. So how much water did we actually heat? Well, if we know how much water was in the can, and we know how much the can weighed, okay, we just take the difference, 269.5 minus 72.3. And I get 197.2 which makes sense because I added about 200 milliliters and one gram equals one milliliter so I added about well 197.2 grams alrighty last but not least make sure to calculate the change in water temperature take 46.0 in my case subtract 21.6 and looks like I wind up with a 24.4 degree temperature difference alright now the tough stuff the calculation that seems to throw people off a little bit here we need to calculate something called H in joules. It's not that difficult of an equation, really. Um, all we're really going to need is the mass of the water heated, so 197.2. Multiply that by the temperature change of the water. So how much water did you have? Multiply it by how hot the water got. Multiply by 24.4. Then you need to multiply by a constant, 4.18, which is the specific heat capacity of water. The units for that are joules divided by grams degrees Celsius. If you're interested in looking at this, you can see how the units are going to cancel out. Grams are going to cancel out because it's in the numerator and denominator. Degrees Celsius will cancel out because it's in the numerator and denominator. And the unit you're going to be left with is joules. So when I take my example, I take the mass of the water, 197.2, multiply by the temperature change, 24.4, multiply by the known constant of 4.18, I get a number in the thousands, I get 20,113. And that's joules. That's how much heat energy was gained by the water in this experiment. Now I want to find out how many joules per gram of fuel I burned. Oh, that's not too tricky. All I really have to do here is take the number I just got, 20,113, and I need to divide that by the amount of fuel that I, that I, that I burned, which in this case was 1.6 grams. So I just take that number, divide it by 1.6 grams, and I get 12,570 joules per gram. I hope you can write neater than I did. I kind of just wrote out all my work. You can probably write that out somewhere else. But this actually sounds pretty good. 20,000 here and 12,000 here. These numbers make sense to me. It's what I've seen in the past. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run this experiment for the candle run all your numbers again and then run it for the lamp oil make sure to get cold uh, fresh water every time I tip just follow what you previously did make sure that um, you are kind of filling out all the values and I'm sure you'll be fine so run it again for the candle and the lamp oil and that way you can compare these three fuels